Good evening and welcome to the Sunderland Select Board meeting for Monday, July 24th, 2017. <coughs> We've got a lively crowd here tonight. Okay. Um, so first up, we've got uh, George back there. Uh, we've got two topics, so the discussion of patrol across road and then a discussion uh, regarding lowering the speed limit from 35 to 25 on North Plain Road. <coughs> you want to come on up, George? See, you know, normally you'd have a place to sit, but you're going to have to go to the <laughs> table. Right, <tonight>. everybody <laughs> Charlotte Cross Road, we need to do something with that road, whether we sink uh, some money, in, some quite a bit of money into it, or turn it back to dirt or repave it. To repave it, it's going to cost about $25,000 to, to do a repave on it. Uh, if we turn it back to dirt, the only section we turn back to dirt is the section through the field. And then we repave the section from Hadley to just past the tobacco, tobacco barn, uh, past the fire hydrant. Yep. and then the rest of it would be turned to dirt. Good dirt. So I'm just looking for some guidance and on what you guys want to spend on it or not spend on it. What would it cost to go back to dirt compared? Uh, probably six to 8,000. We'd probably just have to get a you know, full depth reclamation, have them turn it, put some calcium on it, yeah. it fine grade it. No stay mat, crushed stone, nothing like that. Just I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think we have <coughs> any infrastructure, Mr. Chair? Is yeah, there any, there any is infrastructure that goes across the section past the dwellings? There's two cash, two three cash basins that are in the in, in the farmers fields. Yeah. That go across and they dump out into the brook. Right. Mm -hmm. Right on the sharp corner. And does any of this uh, discussion, whether it's blacktop or whatever, affect grade or their life their life expectancy? No. Any traps? No. I don't think so. I'm just asking, <laughs> only because you get you do something and yeah. five years later you're like, ah, damn. Right. No, it shouldn't cause anything. Most of those basins are way off the road anyway, so mm -hmm. you're not getting not much drainage off anyway. <laughs> okay. No infrastructure. Yeah. Which one's gonna be a little easier to maintain in the winter? You think? Black top usually. I mean, dirt, dirt can be a pain sometimes, but it falls out and then freezes and thaws out and freezes. But hmm. it would be no different than the other few dirt roads that we have. So we still have to follow those. So. Yeah. When just like spring washouts or something like that, that's it's always pretty a flat, so you don't really get much more. That's runoff. true. Yeah. No, we've got a lot of drifting. A lot, a lot of drifting. I would imagine yeah. that because that whole area yes. tends to, because when you go down by the safety complex and all that, no matter how much they plow, it always gets blown back in. When we in. plow that section, we, I, during the night, I won't allow my guys to go through that field during the night because we pull too many vehicles out of the fields stuck. Yeah. They land in the field because they can't tell where the corner is. Yeah, the, the corner is really stuck. When you're trying to figure out where you are in the middle of the night when it's snowing out there. Yeah. So I tell my guys to stay out of there until, I mean, we'll take care of where the houses are. We'll push in there and stop. Yep. But and, then, and then turn around and go out the other way. But wait till the daylight. Yeah. We'll yeah. Over the daylight. A lot of times I'll have to take the loader out there and kind of just keep working back and forth because it does pack quite a bit through there. Yeah. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Joe Sorosky used to have those, the, the wooden fence that he put up along the edge like of the, the road. snow fence. That took care of it, but then he's, you got to forget about him. But if you take go with a, with a, what you call it, go through and make a path on the side, maybe about 10 to 12 feet in off the edge of the road, the snow drift comes right into that hole and does not cover the road. Otherwise, you have to do it every hour or you can't get through. You're plowing with your car through there. Yeah. Good point. Actually, it's not just patrol across the road, it's Hadley Road as well. Hadley Road is and the there's same been way. cars that have gone off the road there and gotten stuck. Yeah. I know a pregnant woman that had to get taken out by ambulance. <clears throat> That's not so cool. Yeah, and I've seen people go off 47 too in the yeah. storms mm -hmm. for the same reason. Yeah. Mm. It could be a lot of prevention. Yeah. Been any town? Um. Well, we heard George, what George had to say. What 
This isn't the first time Patrol Crossroad has been here. Thank you guys for for coming tonight. Um, I don't. It seems the biggest concern is the cost to do something with Patrol Crossroad. So, what do you? Let's hear. What do you guys think? Well, if you're going to make it gravel, I'm going to have a dust issue. Because my house is so close to the road, yep. and it kind of makes a turn right there. So when the mm -hmm. cars go by, I am not going to be able to open my windows to my house because I'm going to get dust. Mm -hmm. and it's happening now because the road has got a lot of dirt. It's broken up. Yeah. The second thing, you make it gravel, those potholes are all going to reappear again. Because mm -hmm. a good example was Brown Crossroad. For years, it was gravel, and it was <coughs> potholes. You'd fix the potholes, a month later they're back. So I black topped it, that was the end of the problem. Good follow up, Mr. Chair? Another yep. thing that I would like to say about that is that that patrol across road is not a town road, it's a county road. Correct. The county owns the road and they did some bunch of stuff, surveillance on that and they agreed to keep it open. That was about Four or five years ago, they did that. Uh, maybe a little more. Yeah, and it's you know the yeah, county was four or five years ago. The county pays money to the we town. We didn't have any. What's that? The county pays money to the town for that road, right? No, no there's no more county. We don't get anything for it. No. Counties were disbanded uh, 10, 11, no, 20 years ago. Yeah. Bill Weld. That's a while ago. That's right. So there's no. Unfortunately, there. So we. It's interesting you say that because we actually wish most small towns wish there was a county right. form of government was back in operation because it helped us do a lot of things we're lucky we had the FERCOG the Franklin Regional Council of Government but a lot of the things that happened in the county went away unfortunately Tom can I say something uh, for years I've been in that in that household my in-laws it's mine now but for about 57 years now. And that has been blacktopped from the fire hydrant just before Michkowski's on the tobacco barn side, all the way to the point where the mailboxes used to be. Mm -hmm. That's been blacktopped all those years. And if it goes back to what, what's over there coming from Helen Sitters around the corner, I hit it today because it's full of water. A hole this deep, this big around. I went into it. Okay, you can't see it when the when the rain comes. There, you can't see none of those water, bottles. The water sits in the road. It don't it's, drain out. No, it doesn't go out. Mm -hmm. it just we had, we had talked when George when George first came in. That was um, one of our one of our board's concern. That's why we wanted to talk to you. One of our concerns was dust um, in in the. And George had talked about continuing to pave the front sections by each house yeah. on either end to maintain that pave mm -hmm. but to go to go to um, back to a, a gravel road between those pavement points along the fields there during the fields well you're gonna have two issues now what's that you'll have two issues with it being gravel what's that well the dust in the potholes right yeah and 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 see that that's 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 what we want to that's what we want to look at, um, I, and I agree with you. I, I know, and I, I just know that whenever you have a pothole, I mean they you, don't go away. They, they keep for coming, whatever they reason. Get bigger they and bigger. Keep yeah, I don't know why they start, but once they get yeah. once they probably George knows why they start, but I I don't know. It seems like every time I have a pothole and I try to fill it, you know, I'd go underneath it, go six inches below it, eight inches below it. I don't know why it has a memory, but it's like a living organism. It keeps coming back. So I don't know why, Stanley. You Fifty down. years? How come? I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> 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 I have no recollection, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see you went. I see you went to the attorney before you came here tonight. <laughs> I, so I, I don't know. I don't know what the right, person. I don't know what the right answer is. I, I just know it's, it's it's not a road that's used a lot. We all know it's that. It's not just used by us. It's used by other, other residents people. and their partners. More, it's used and more and more now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny you should say that. Because we I, could I, always tell who went by in the past. Not well, it's funny now. you should say that because I was going by there for the last few weeks. So, you know, when something we start talking about something, your, your, your awareness yeah, is heightened. Yeah. 
and and I see cars go on there, and I'm going, that car, and. That's why there's been a speed issue through there too. It, well, the other thing is, it's it's sometimes we have neighbors or neighborhoods that want, and and mostly we have now paved roads in most almost most of most of our town, and and it's funny, um, they come in asking that they be paid for the same reason that you just said, dust potholes, um, but. Typically, within a year after the road is paved, the yeah. same groups are back in talking to us about the cars and the speed that they're going up and down the road. So, I don't know. I don't know the right way. I like potholes because it slows people down. Uh, if you went like this, you're dizzy uh, going down the road. <laughs> Good point. I, I don't know what the right answer is. Is the town liable if somebody goes into one of their potholes and does damage? No. George. I don't know the answer, Stanley. I mean, I, I think the town is responsible for it. And if there is a pothole, then it, you like, well, let's tell what's just saying. If it's full of water and you can't see it, oh, and yeah. you tear out the front end of your car, who's responsible for that? Well, we can find I, out. I think it's, it's, it's town I, I, property. Well, it's usually, town usually, property. usually you get, I always thought you got like 24 hour, somebody has to tell you about a a problem and you have to you have to make every attempt to correct that problem in an appropriate <clears throat> amount of time i thought i thought that's what they say so i mean what are you going to have somebody every two weeks go down through there and try to grade it up again because you know what's going to happen it's going to pop all immediately and you, all you need is a good rain like we got now and before you know it you got holes again tom i gotta i gotta tell you another thing uh, when we had the rain, not this rain now, but the ones we had before, okay, about a month ago that we had rains, 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 mm -hmm. okay, there's a pickup that went by. I have the 90 foot long tobacco barn and the flower garden there, and the pickup went flying through those, through that water, all that length, about halfway down the tobacco barn on the road. The, the things were up as high, halfway up to the ceiling, the water was, fl was flying. And he was speeding. There's a 25 mile an hour, what you call it there? He had been going at least 40 miles an hour to make it to- On that road, think about that. It was like on the ocean. The potholes don't matter. To the potholes don't the matter, to, don't the, matter to, the, to those guys. either when they're high vehicles. So another thing that I'd like clarification upon. Um, Shoot. This was told to me that there's a priority with the roads in town, that that in the town or the exterior of the town has no priority as far as a hierarchy, as far as the maintenance or the snow plowing of the road. Is that true? No, we have a snow plow policy, yes. Yes, I know you have a policy, but I mean, priority wise, does it mean that like the repairs for this road are like. No. 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 Uh, Not at all. The yeah. snow plowing is the only thing that has prioritization, is those side roads like that. Get done I just want to make sure that yeah. the repairs are done no, 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 equally no. because it has been said to me. No. Okay. I would like to say the last two times that road has been repaired, it has been reclaimed. And now there's spots where there's no gravel left in it. Mm -hmm. The clay has came through. And the cl clay comes up through and they reclaim it and they mix everything up so you got nothing there now. That's been there's three no years base. like this. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's that one that section, way. there's like a hundred feet. It's, it's just all broke up. There's nothing there. And that's what it is. The clay has come up through. They reclaimed it, mixed it all up to make gravel out of it, but it's, it's not a very good product. So the reclaiming doesn't really work. If you don't have a good roadbed, reclaiming don't work. I think I remember hearing that uh, 1996. Standing on that road with, uh, with you guys, your dad and Charlie, and talking about some of those things back then. That's what I was on the oh. planning board. Tom, <clears throat> can I make another comment? Uh, I was going by this spring with a mess that we have on our road. You can hardly go back through, and I was told to take a different road. Not don't use that road. Okay, I pay the taxes. The taxes have been paid there for a hundred years on that property, okay? And I was told to go a different road. So, uh, and another thing, I was going up next to the, the apartments, okay, on 47, and I see some, one of the highwaymen working, 
he had this pad like this, he had put some blacktop on the very edge of the road and it was being tamped, okay? So I called the highway department and they says that the, the center of town is more important than a back road. In other words, Petrola Cross. I said that we pay our taxes just as much as anybody in the center of town does. That's not right. I did not say that, Ms. Dell. I told you that we passed those roads and then we're trying to figure out what we're doing. I know what you told me, sir. Well, I, I can tell you one thing. Every we, we try to we try to we try to do the best we can. Ro roads have always been a difficult thing, you know, and, and to ma maintain it. Um, like I said, I don't I don't know the right I don't know the right answer for for the for a crossroad like that. It'd be easy it'd be easy to say just to pave it. I, I, that that's an easy that's an easy response, but you have to start looking at the affordability of paving it also, and or the cost of trying to maintain it long term if it's a dirt road. I mean, you know, we're not set up like some of the towns in Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, upstate New York that that do dirt road maintenance all the time they have their york rates and their rollers and mm -hmm. and everything so we we don't we're not set up like that either so george when you talk about reconstructing for the twenty four thousand, what what what's that's what's, just an overlay that's to put a shim down and fill everything in and then go over it again with, with another top so it's going to be a little bit longer so something similar to Cemetery Road. Yes. Mm. That was shimmed and then yep. yeah. yep. you You'd have to shim the potholes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Otherwise, yeah. If, you just, yeah. if, if you just went over it, the potholes will sink in and it'll be sure. holes again. Yeah, Cemetery Road, but prior to this, this last effort, had a fair amount of you know agricultural truck traffic. Right. So it, it cupped right in. Yeah. It had to be shimmed up and leveled out. And uh, the nice part about all that work that was done is now people who have to get to the cemetery can go that much faster. <laughs> <laughs> and they do go that much faster. Because Lord knows their dogs need to be walked that much more, it's that much more important. Well, we can always put some speed bumps in there. I wish we could. A couple of times with those, they'll slow down. I know. <laughs> I wish we could. You want to borrow some, actually. Traffic calming <laughs> device. <laughs> Yeah. Traffic calming devices. So, I don't think a who, who came up with that word? Huh? <coughs> who came up with that word? Engineer. I, I, I was talking to Paul this morning. He passed along that words of wisdom to me. Oh, so he came up with it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We just got back from vacation. I'll have to post him. <laughs> so, so, George, what happens if you do it over? Can, what, what happens if you do it over two years? Right now, the only thing that's on it right now is oil and stone, and I only think there's maybe one, maybe two layers of it. So yeah, it never it really had. Two layers. It never really had a good base. No, you you um, made it up that much thickness in the two layers. Yeah. Exactly. I don't even think it's that thick. Yeah. It could be dug out real quickly then, or easy enough. And the road is out of shape now. Know, it's wheel rutted and so forth. Oh no, it's higher in the middle. Yeah, it's wheel rutted. They recommend. To shim it, then uh, just yeah. put a binder on top. Right. Just a base coat, not a finished top, right? Uh, Two inches. We talk about both ways. You'd probably better just use a binder. Just a binder. It's, a yeah. it's not a highway, a super highway. Yeah. Um, it's got more strength in a binder than it does in just top. Because you have bigger stone. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's we're not looking for a super <laughs> highway. No, just, just something that I, you know. I I just. You know, just like when we talk in the, about the mountain roads, it's just like, you know, 40 years ago, everybody didn't have four-wheel drive, and, and how many, you know, so you had five or six trucks in town that could go up there and then maintain. Now you have dirt bikes, four-wheelers, quad runners. Yeah, and there's some that aren't even registered go by our house, those four-wheelers. <laughs> Mom and up. <laughs> That's for the police. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. You want to, what do you think, Davey? I, I. <laughs> I, I, I think maybe George give come up with a plan for us. Give yeah, us a plan. Look at us. I'm gonna take a look at it. I'd love, to, I'd love to put speed bumps in there, but <laughs> traffic calming devices. No, that'd be good for Chestnut. 
Yeah, but you know what? You know, you know what happened. Although <laughs> just they, they it do now. it in Amherst, don't they, George? What's that? Uh, <laughs> traffic calming devices. They did. You look on Route Nine over by Amherst College. Those are those yeah. are pretty those big are ones. Yeah. So a couple of those questions. Those are big ones over yeah. there, Mr. Chair. Yep. So yeah, if if we spend twenty five thousand dollars on on this road, what is that? Straight from Chapter Ninety. Chapter Ninety. And uh, what's the starting balance of Chapter 90? Uh, I think we have 300 thousand in there okay. before the projects that we've been scheduled. So this Almost year? 400000 I think. Say 400000 total? Somewhere around there, yeah. Okay. And that's not town appropriation. That's Chapter 90 money, right? Yeah. So we take twenty five k out of this. What else is on this year's capital list besides what we've appropriated for? Mm -hmm. That is catch basin work, et cetera. What's, what's the target out of Chapter 90? We're not fitting any vehicles. It's never been our no, style. Never bought. Right yeah. now we have um, a section of 47 to redo. That's going to mm -hmm. cost probably 150. Mm -hmm. um, long, we're going to try to do that with the grant we just got for the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. We're trying to collate that at the same time. Um, there is so the, so the, the, the complete streets is going to deal with the sidewalk, sidewalk and curb cuts. It's, it's not going to deal with, it's important not to blend yeah. the two things, right? right? Okay. Yeah. So we got about a hundred and change we're talking about on that 47 piece. Yeah. So that gets us to 300. Yeah. And then there's a section up on uh, North uh, Park Road that's got to be re full depth reclamation to reshape the road so we can get the water to drain where it's supposed to be. By the triangle? No, by Williams. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because right now the that inside that slope field that right. runs right down the middle of the road. So yep. usually in the winter time, I got that much ice. I just take yep. the road. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're trying to reshape that so the water will stay on both sides. And what's the budget for that? That one I think is about forty thousand. I think. So one ninety. It's that much, but it's yeah. And that'll leave uh, that'll leave two hundred just north of two hundred thousand dollars available in uh, chapter yeah, I ninety. I'd like to leave a little bit in there just so we have a cushion in case something happens. And we're in the we receive about uh, one hundred and forty each. Right, one hundred and forty. Okay. So if we plug this twenty five thousand in, just go for it. Kit and caboodle, right? Yep. That'll still leave us south of two hundred thousand dollars, but something moving forward. What's the risk of going full blacktop with respect to grade and water? Because you have essentially a, you, have a, you have a road cutting through effectively two fields. Right. Yeah. Right now you've got a permeable surface. You do a little bit of surface drain. I'm sure it's topical at best. With respect to, I'd hate One to do I'd hate to, to do this corner. work. But right. Most of the water usually ends up in that corner, mm -hmm. and there is a catch basin right there. So I make sure we do a little corner at the corner going into the barn. Yeah. In the yeah. middle yeah. of the field. Yeah. Make sure we do a paved soil there so the water will get into that basin okay. and then drain yeah. out. And then we just make sure we put a, a, a small crown in the road so the water will gradually Both sides. run off on every, you know, everywhere through the road. We don't step one Where does it I start mean, from? Alley roads are 47. So what's in front of Kurt's house is where there's a lot of water that builds That's up. That's because there's a huge low spot. Low spot the yeah. sides are so high, the water has nowhere to go. Is there any way to have... Like the way she's no stopping, that's down. what I'm talking about. Right, because well, we can headed there. If we start, if we start, yeah, all, if we start all through the road so and putting a hard so surface on, on, what comes of it, right? right. That's what I'm trying to get right. out nicely because it, it is a build up there now yeah. because it's been halfway up for tires. Yep. It um, is. Yeah. And yeah, there's so some low sections through there. I see. It's terrible. I see. I agree. It's very icy there. So we'll try to correct, correct that by bringing everything up and cleaning the shoulder so the water can run off the road. Good. Thank you don't want to put all the money into it and then have it start crumbling again sure. because it's right. freezing and yeah. falling apart. Kurt, do you see any issues with having a, a less than permeable surface cut across that? Yeah, maybe you gotta pay attention I've to how got, it's built. I've got more dust problems with the fields, not to the road. Well, I'll get it. I live close up, so yeah. I mm. experience the same. Sure. I want to put it out there in the, in the in that form of water migration. You know, we can we so can deal with it. We're it. talking about dealing with the dust. If we deal with the dust and then we create a bigger problem, well, are we all sitting back here in two years with you know new faces in the table? Like I don't yeah, know. They're the same faces. Mm. I, that side, Scott. Yeah. So. Again, an area of concern is if, if we go about making a hard surface <coughs> out of it, that water. we'll really pay attention to that water part. <coughs> okay. So that we, if we if we go about tonight and we vote for the twenty five nice round numbers, as my my my, my dear uh, mentor Bruce Gordon used to say, round numbers. It's round easier. Numbers. Twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand dollars for this surface, uh, this work. 
as an estimate, we'll have about 190-ish thousand round numbers left going forward in Chapter 90. Is that enough moving forward? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anything else on this one? I'd like to make a motion that uh, George presents us with a plan for uh, see what we can do for $25,000, see if we can get what we need done done. Okay. okay. All right. Sounds motion. Good. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Read a zip on that one, Sherry. Okay. George, it would be nice if you could raise it there. Right. The right. How's it? It's going to cause you more problems. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's wicked in there. The water the comes in, it's like this. Yep. And the cars go by, like I say, the pickups, they, they fly through there. And I'll tell you, they're up yeah, 20 feet in the air, the, 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 the waves from the, the, from when they fly through there. They don't care. <laughs> Donald Sterling gets his windows It'll be a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. not, in, not in a good way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It flies through there at times. <laughs> that, that's the only drawback, is when it is paved. Or later, you, know, you may start seeing a lot more people speeding up and down, right. too. The police can sit there and oh, yeah. catch those that are going <laughs> sit on like the that. corner. It's still a shaker cane. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Slow down. You no, know, if I see him more than once, with spikes. No, no, no. If I, if I, I like no, more than once. It's, if it's a habit, then I'll report it. Otherwise, once or twice, if they go through there, that doesn't bother me any. Okay, no. Yeah. Although all fishermen mind. Yeah. Okay. Keep it in the dark. Right. Perfect. Thanks so much. You keep it in the Appreciate dark. it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. I don't mean to be a stinker. We've been living with this for so long. Four fifty. Four fifty. From one from one highway department to another to the next one to the next one supervisor and down the road. We've always had problems there. It should have been left alone. That at the end of the road, instead of the pond there, it was straight through to Shmorovsky. Just about in the road years and years ago was. All the way to Vermont. But hey, you know, got what you got now. On a Wednesday night, I may see eight. Roads are pricey, so it's always tough. You know. Okay. Monday. Monday through Friday. We'll really appreciate anything that you can do for helping. Yes. Three, four votes, five votes. We'll get it done. Yep. I think it's all resolved. Yeah. Okay. Well, right. Nice oh, wow. Thank you. Where you are? I'm going to try to. Oh, good. I might be late in summer, but it'll be done sometime. So. Okay. Hopefully, the weather will hold out, you know? Yeah, we've got 50 degrees in the spring. Yeah. Exactly. Excuse me. Probably up to 100 next week. <laughs> Thank you, Don't do that. Thanks, Thanks so much. Nice to Appreciate Thanks. it. Thank you, guys. Bye, you still. <laughs> All right. And the next topic, which I'm guessing the other half of the room is here for. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> so much. I don't like to keep harping on something. Is, um, I don't like it. I'm not Regarding that lowering of the speed limit from 35 to 25 on North Plain Road. Thank you. Good night. All right. Anybody got any comments on it? We're all in favor of it. Oh, yeah? yeah. <laughs> Anybody not in favor of it here? Just to take hey, a quick call. 20 miles per hour. You want it down to 20? <laughs> 20. <laughs> well, did you put some nice big speed bumps on there, you know? Uh, Get some air as you're going over? <laughs> no, at 20, she might bike faster than that. But you know, that's, yeah, right. that's true. That's true. All right. Um, <clears throat> do you have any, any comments on Scott? Or no, I'm, on I'm good. We have, a, we have a recommendation from the chief of police, so right. it's important to talk to the residents. Yeah. How about you, Tom? Any, anything else? Anything you want to? Um, I, I, I would just uh, like to uh, briefly talk about how 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 it came about. Yeah. Um, it it occurred when the uh, present um, administration, executive, so the governor, lieutenant governor, they uh, put out a thing about making making um, making government allowed to react quicker to, to concerns and just and I don't know if you guys know about what it would take <coughs> to, 
excuse me, before to try to lower a speed limit before you needed to do a traffic study mm -hmm. and then they it and if 80 if 80 percent of the car 80 percent of the cars exceeded the speed limit then the speed limit was good and they actually may raise the speed limit yeah um so if you had a speed limit like 35 and you know yourself how many people exceed to 35 probably only one car the other day that didn't exceed and that was my tractor when I went down the road but uh, um, so it was always it always was strange to me how we allowed or that that was a process is but if 80% of the cars exceeded or some percentage exceeded the speed limit then the speed limit was probably set too low or should be go up higher so they never went down but it always went up right. so so what the the, the governor and the legislators did is they made changes to the way we do business and that's one of the things that that went in so the governor um, actually listened to groups small towns uh, MMA uh, which is mass municipal association and they responded and they did a they did a good job because there's a lot of other things that happen that also like it never made sense like if you had a a vehicle in your fleet town fleet that had an accident you always have to appropriate the money even though you're getting insurance money to cover it you have to appropriate that money onto your taxpayers and then you'd still get the insurance money you would get the appropriated money and then you would get that money would go back to free cash never made sense to me they changed that as well so there, there, there's some good things so just so you and then they made it so if we accepted a uh, a general law, which we did at town meeting, this last town meeting, you'd be able to change it just by having the uh, chief of police certify that it was it was a thickly settled area. <coughs> it has uh, so now we're in a position where we can lower the speed limit. I'm not going to say cars going to go slower, um, but hopefully it will help. Do you know how soon that would happen? I know it's Sean. Oh, excuse me. Okay. I was just wondering how soon that would happen. It's lower. I have to get some signs made. I was going to say, that's probably the, the slowest yeah, part of it. It's, 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 a, it's, a vote, it's a vote of this body. Yeah. It's a vote of town meeting, which has already occurred. And then it's implementing it with some signage. And the chief of police has already made this recommendation. So, within a month? Depending on sign. I just meant before school starts again. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Totally. totally good. Stop on our street, so yeah. And we have to. We're on that program too. We're going to go around and replace all our signage for the reflectivity yeah, anyway, we right? Yeah. all our speed limit signs and stuff. Were, we're just replaced. So. Uh, right. Okay. So. I didn't order any extra at the time because that's all the money we had. Mm -hmm. Now we belong to the cog, and they have their own sign making machine over at Greenfield uh, that's right. Greenfield yep. Highway Department. Mm -hmm. So we got to go there and. Signs down, okay. just a little bit of time. Schedule down to make sure they have somebody there to make sure we run the machine right. So make sure we get trained. So <laughs> okay, you get up, get in the queue. Uh, I mean, you got to get in the queue. Yeah. I mean, uh, no. <coughs> have a question. Yep. Uh, how will these signs be placed on more plane? Uh, how will they be placed? Yeah. Will just replace where the existing ones are. In other words, that beginning from uh, Plum Tree to South Sub Lane. Uh, I in. think there's what there's two on there, one on each end. Okay, yeah, that's it. That's all with the yeah, same, same procedure. Yeah, same, same, same area. Let's swap them out. If I could, Mr. Chair, yep. George, we're talking simply about speed limit signs, not the town boundary signs, which we have a cut sheet here for, right? These signs go on the town borders. Yes. Yeah. These are these are not these. Oh, it's just be a plain. Right, Speaking regular sign. Right. Again, we have we still have to notify the, the transient drivers at the town borders that this is an adopted statute. Yeah, and those. We have it, so. But again, as we have adopted this statute, and yes, we're going to we we're going to we're going to get these out there. Right. So we're going to add those uh, at the boundaries. Oh, exactly, exactly right. That. Yep. that was easy. Yeah, I've seen these across the Commonwealth in the past. And yeah. For those people who are you know, you're entering a town that has an otherwise posted that's the speed limit. Now that means the speed limit is going to be the speed limit. Your signs, my signs, don't much change. But at some point, you've got to notify everybody who's driving in that the town's adopted that piece. So, so you want one of these on? I think we have to talk. We have to talk with the chief as to where, where these have got to go, where right. thickly settled means, and what you know where they have to can't go. Put them on. Can't put them on 116. Yeah. 
that was important to clarify. So your speed limit sign, just like the one in my front yard, will likely change. The three will turn to a two. Yeah, hopefully it helps. Right. You know? Unless you're a PBTA driver. <laughs> in which case it means double it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you, you, you spend some time in that corner. Anyway. Or cut it down to like, mm -hmm. you know, a third of that. Right. Uh, uh, move, move to accept the chief's recommendation and lower the speed limit on uh, Silver, South Silver, and North Plain, as recommended, to 25 miles an hour. Have a second? Sure. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero, Sherry. Signs are coming. Signs sealed and, and, and they, delivered. And thanks for bringing that? it. I mean, this, this again, as far as as far as what Tom had mentioned earlier, it took it. You know, we have a you have a. a Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Legislature that allows some agility to the towns, but it also takes people at the town level to say, "Hey, we really want to talk about this, get it to town meeting, and people show up, and then this happens." Mm. So, thanks for your effort. And, and let's, you let's, let's not forget, you're 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 talking about maybe take maybe taking less than thirty seconds longer. Right. I mean, it's not right for the stretch. Right. I mean that road, North Plain Road, is what three quarters of a mile, not not much more than that, right? I mean you can simple simple math, which was over my head at the present time. I would have to do <laughs> factor label and all that kind of stuff. But you're talking less than thirty seconds, right? So I, I but the only thing I will remind everyone, typically when our police department does radar and they're out. Usually it's the neighbors that are usually it's the people who live in that in the neighborhood, yeah. neighborhood yeah. or yeah. area. I'm not saying just saying on that road. <laughs> just saying that, that that typically just are don't get caught speeding. And I and I would say I, I and I would say I mean if you it's hard, but if you see your neighbor and going, it, I mean because we all live there, but but typically it is. And again, that's coming from the chief will tell you and our, our police officers is typically a lot of the neighbors that uh, that. Ex that's true. South Plain has been 25 miles per hour for quite a while to the South Plain. That's been 25 for a few years. Sometimes, so yeah. We match the South Plain and the North Plain to equal mm -hmm. right. out of the road. Yeah, right through. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's hard to believe, too, because North Plain was probably paved after South Plain. <laughs> right? It's true. Yeah. South Plain was paved much earlier. Yep. I don't quite understand why North Plain would be 35 and the other one would be 25. I mean, I remember when there's basically one thing, you had to, oh, the, the Keats's had a sawmill on there, that was it. So right. then, mm -hmm. then the houses started yeah. shortly after that, right. but basically there's a sawmill there. That Not that kids used to go there and get in trouble. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Good night. Thank you. Hey, Dan. Kind of nice having all those people. Oh, sorry. You know. It's a change. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh. <laughs> I don't think you need to stick around for anything. Hold on. I think so. Yeah. Thanks so much. Hey, thanks for coming in. Have a good one. All right. You too. We'll just take a brief. This is when you play the little graphic with the music while we wait for Tom to come back. <laughs> All right. Um, next up, we have our minutes from 710. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, move to accept the minutes of uh, July 10th. Uh, we have a second? It was a busy second. meeting. Mm -hmm. It was. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. And then, not to be outdone, we have the minutes from 719. It was a very quick meeting about yeah, USDA yes. grant. One topic. Uh, move to accept the minutes of 719. Got a second on that one? Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, now on to the Board of Selectmen updates. What do you got, Tom? Anything exciting this week? Um, I, I, I would say the, uh, 
the um, 300th committee has a meeting the first Thursday of the month. It starts at 6 o'clock. It's up here. If anyone's interested, um, they uh, more than happy. There's still a lot of things that they're working on, so I would I would encourage anybody that's thinking about or wanting to look at something to, to come to the meeting um, and talk to Tom Zimnasi, the chair. The um, also like to uh, thank uh, sh probably thank Sherry um, for putting a notice in the um, mailer that went out about um, asking people if they want to volunteer. Yeah, we've yeah. gotten great. We got some great responses. Yep, we did. Yeah. And uh, matter of fact, Stanley had a volunteer for one of the committees. Also, he was oh, just here. So. Yeah, good. Um, so I think it worked out, and and bringing people on board is a is a great thing. It is. So it'll work out well. Important thing. Scott, good name. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I could, at the request of some residents in town, with inquiries about the status of the Sugarbush Meadows project, they reached uh, out to developers, and uh, we're tentatively planning a meeting for the first part of next week to see where everybody's at. Okay, it's good to check on the. Status. Pulse or whatever that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know if you have anything this week. So that we turn the time to Sherry. Um, kind of action planning and working with um, department heads and the boards and committees for fiscal year 18. Um, and one of the things that uh, we'd like to do in, is um, make more community awareness. And um, one of the things we'd like to do is um, issue a quarterly newsletter. Yeah. Um, so I contacted uh, Ben Barshevsky at the school to see if it would be something that we could send out on the school listserv mm. and uh, maybe start a listserv on our own website mm. as well for people who maybe aren't affiliated with school um, so that we could um, email it out as well. Um, so um, I also contacted some of the senior tax work off people for assistance yep. and uh, we have two that are interested in helping us nice. oh, with the good. newsletter that have um, experience and so with the board's permission I'd like to send the first newsletter out um, probably the end of September okay. and uh, do it quarterly so with maybe the next one going out January. Yeah, then good prior to town meeting and election time in April, and then at the close of the fiscal <clears throat> year um, in June. I got a suggestion too, like for as far as mail stuff, I can talk to you afterwards about that might help too. So, oh good. But yeah, that's <clears throat> that's a uh, that'd be good because that's another way to get information out to folks. Yeah. Right. And looking yeah. at um, best practices and improving the budget process next year, one of the things that um, I'd like to implement and that I've talked to. Um, the um, people involved is financial management team quarterly meetings yep. um, and to meet quarterly with um, a, a member of the selectmen, the accountant, the treasurer, and a member of the finance committee and myself to kind of talk about some of the things that are going on financially, mm -hmm. uh, look at revenues and anything that's you know, coming down the pipeline so we can prepare and plan for them uh, and for the next budget process. So. Um, looking forward to kicking that off after Labor Day as well. well that's good. <clears throat> I think, it, and I think it's good to to do stuff like that. You know, it kind of keeps us on our toes and tries to. And we try to look at different approaches to getting information out there and different kinds of information. Maybe like what's more useful to people to help yeah, understand the process and improve <clears throat> communication internally. I think sometimes we all get so busy that we get focused on yep, our just trying to survive exactly um, so being able to sit down and kind of talk things out would be helpful yeah and I think too going into it the more information people have then you have it rather than trying to recap things you can have a more informed discussion on what the issues are mm -hmm. you know which is good so that'd be good yeah and we've been batting around some other ideas so we'll, maybe okay. we'll get creative yeah maybe we'll do call-in hotlines yeah there we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right <coughs> so let's put my minutes aside, and then next we have we have a couple of we have a resignation from Jennifer Uncles, right? Yeah. What's up next? You can read that. It's received uh, seven eighteen seventeen. Dear Selectman, I sadly need to step down from the three hundredth committee. 
family obligations are taking precedence and I don't want to take up that spot when someone else with more time could be there. Sincerely, Jennifer Uncles. And we appreciate uh, appreciate her time in there. I know she spends a lot of time in the uh, Conservation Commission right. too. So we that's right. really appreciate that. A motion to accept uh, with uh, sincere regrets. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, and then we have a letter about the Purple Heart community designation. And it says, uh, received 719. Dear members of the select board, when I invited the military order of the Purple Heart to be a part of the Sunderland's 300th anniversary parade, uh, Mr. Brian Roulette, who is a contact person at the Holyoke Soldiers Home, requested that Sunderland become a Purple Heart community. He sent me the Purple Heart proclamation for your signature. Once signed, a copy would be sent to Mr. Willett, who would send it to our national headquarters. Sunderland would then go on the national website as a Purple Heart community. If you would like, at some point, Brian can come back for a presentation thanking the town. I feel this would be a wonderful part to add to our veterans program at the end of the 300th. I feel honored to be able to pass this request to you. Sincerely, Brenda Wozniak-Evitz. Okay. <coughs> it might be good to have him come back for a little presentation here just uh, so folks know. See what it is. What it means right. to be a Purple Heart community. Right. Uh, I take it we'll need a vote on that, huh? Yes. Right. Tom, what are your thoughts? What do you know about it? Uh, not a lot, Scotty. Mm. Do you want to have him come back and do a presentation first, or? Well, we don't. We don't necessarily take. We have not necessarily taken proclamations and acceptances uh, in a written correspondence. That's some measure of presentation, and we've yeah. actually we've actually turned down proclamation requests. Yep. So it might be good to get an idea. And this is the 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 proud son of a veteran. So. Yep. Oh yeah. yeah it's just good. Good practice to know what you're right. you're signing up for. So, Even for one of our next two meetings, this isn't going to be imperative. I may may be helpful with their schedule, but it would be nice to know what we're committing the to town to with respect to this proclamation and acceptance. Yep, that would be great. Okay, should we have them uh, schedule something, Sherry? Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> that'd be good for our viewers too to see. Right. So, I feel the same way. All right, and I think. That's all we have on our agenda for the evening, right? On our regular schedule one. And I, I see you have something pulled up on your screen there. Do I do. I, I've been remiss, Mr. Chair, if I could, with <clears throat> our uh, quote worth requoting. And this is a quote <laughs> from uh, one of those one of those guys who took it upon himself to participate in some small event by the name of James Madison. Um, what did he do again? He was too busy tweeting to actually you know, do something of value. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Madison quoted, a popular government without a popular information or the means of acquiring it is but a prologue to a farce or a tragedy or perhaps both. So do your homework, you elect do your homework electorate, understand your information, and don't listen to the lies. And get it from a reliable source. Correct. Get it secondhand. All right. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Or? Motion. motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. 3-0. We're signing out at 724. <laughs>